Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate. Seasons come, seasons go, but the advocacy continues. I certainly won't be staying silent on a topic dear to my heart. I'll be saying, ready or not, it's time to tell our menstruation stories. Bola Hall tells the story of the Almagiris, more like a history lesson, actually. I imagine it might be hoping we derive some lessons from the story. I hope so, too. Liberus chronicles our journey in security and welfare and finds it lopsided, tilted towards their welfare and away from our security. Not a pleasant picture. Chuka, in his usual cool, calm manner, manages to disguise the devastation he envisages in his advocacy, which is titled A New Order. Ekenes is an advocacy of zero tolerance to bribery. She isn't impressed by the so-called executive gifts to judges, which she says are more like a poison chalice. It should probably come with a warning. This edition, however, does come with a warning. It promises to be loaded and hard eating. So be prepared. Until we speak out about the things that matter to us, it is assumed that they don't matter. I'll be talking about our menstruation stories, breaking the silence. It was Dr. Abiodun Guidon who said, even in war situations and pandemic, the menstrual blood will flow. It's not an appetite that can be suppressed. It's not tears that you wipe off. It's a cycle that must be completed. When the flow starts, it takes it full course. No cutting short, no shortcut. COVID-19 has tested everyone, regardless of gender and race across the world, in varying degrees and in different ways. While the pandemic confined us at home in a lockdown, I started curating stories of women regarding access to sanitary pads for menstruation for a sanitary pad media campaign. I believe that if women broke the silence around menstruation, the myths, misconceptions, taboos, and stigma by documenting their experiences on a poster, will be able to draw the attention of those in governance to the harsh everyday realities that women, including thousands of girls, go through during this biological phenomenon. I broke the campaign on Facebook and Instagram at the beginning of May with 60 women advocates whose stories are documented. By the end of the two-week campaign, we had swelled to 85 women and five men. Yes, men. Men are in this with us. Steve Jobs said the most powerful person in the world is a storyteller. A storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation that is to come. And this is exactly what the women have done. They've shared accounts of how they struggle through their cycles with tissue paper, some using pieces cut from Ankara wrappers. Yes, others share stories of girls using foams and rags to hold their menstrual blood. There were stories about affordability of sanitary pads as young girls as well. And this is still the case nowadays. It's as real for those in rural areas as it is for low-income areas and slums in urban centers. Now, since the federal government removed taxation from sanitary pads in January, the prices are yet to change in the markets. So I asked the federal government of Nigeria today to make sanitary pads free in Nigerian secondary schools where we have the majority of the girls struggling with period poverty. And many women suffer from dysmenorrhea, known as painful menstruation as well. It restricts movement for the first two days for some and all of five days for many more. 
menopausal women, they also go through a lot of menstrual discharge at the onset of menopause, which also affects their productivity. As it is in some countries, can we have menstruation leave for women two days in a month? I am glad that on the international scene as well, the Doha debate has also been documenting menstruation stories of women. It shows that across the world, an awakening is taking place about women's menstrual needs. And the need is so much that I have joined other NGOs and individuals in seeking a solution. I have started the Vision 1000 for 1000 initiative. It is to raise funds to provide 12 months supply of sanitary pads to 1000 girls across 10 locations in Nigeria. With 10,000 Naira, you can adopt a girl in the rural area and pay for her sanitary pads for one year. This is a work in progress. Join us. I've had to undergo a kind of, um, you say, evolution in my beliefs around this whole area. Obviously, I'm on the campaign. Yes. Um, I put out my menstruation story. Um, but it wasn't something that came naturally to me, believe it or not, even though I'm a woman. I'm a very private person in, in ways that people may not appreciate. But, and then also, the other side I was weighing up was why should sanitary pads free sanitary pads take priority over all the myriad of things that people go through, you know, whether it's cancer sufferers. And we know our, our government, they have so many things that are pressing in on them right. in spite of the fact that they have issues with but our budgets and the, the way they manage it. So when you look at all those things, you sort of say, you need to make a case. And then I was saying to my colleague who stays with me as well that if you now start making women like a special case, then even I as an employee, I will, I will not want to touch them because I'll say, if I take this woman on, like I have a lady who works with me, Imagine if she was taking two days off every month. That would be a problem for me. You know, so you now, and I know my, uh, someone else said, ah, they, they wouldn't employ women because they have period issues. And I was laughing at the time, but when you mentioned this, I thought it's a real consideration. I'm saying all that to still say, yes, I feel we must still show support because this is like you say, life goes on. Periods will continue to flow. So right. there's a case for it. But we need to also recognize the other things people are dealing with when they're dealing with the economics and find ways to work with women, maybe to say maybe on those two days, work from home, because it's a reality that you can't function if you're going through severe cramping and, and yet you're, you're somebody who has a lot to offer. So we need to look at it and sort of work with the bigger picture and sort of say, yes, it's very important, but there are also economic interests. There are also things that people have to weigh up when they're saying, oh, free. But very quickly to, to end here, the fact that you mentioned that uh, taxes were taken off, that's one worth pursuing instantly. Let it reflect in the cost of sanitary towels, at the right. very least. Right. That one we can pursue. I, 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 I see Liberal <laughs> smiling to himself. I can't yeah, wait to hear it, you. No, 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 seriously, <laughs> um, it's, it's a good story. Yeah, it's a good advocacy. And um, for me, I, I would want to also uh, toe the line of a kene. Yes, take one step at a time. Uh, this idea of uh, two days leave because of menstruation. It's quite severe. It's, uh, it, will have, it will have a cobra effect. It's not have everybody. Have you seen anyone suffering from I painful have, I have, menstruation? I have, I have. I have. I've yeah. even had to buy drugs. I've even had to buy drugs for when yeah. I was in school. I had a girlfriend who had that problem. Confession so I always, time. seriously, no, I was Lewis always, is a, is a, is a, I'm very open. In touch. I was always, you know, having to buy her, I forgot the name of the drug now, you know, for her menstrual pain. But like you said, it is not everybody. So it's you have not. a cobra effect where everybody will claim on it. to have that pain, mm. you know, during menstruation. And there are, I know some people also who even during menstruation, you see them, they still exercise, they live life normally. Mm. You know, but because of the society we live in where, you know, you need as many hands as you can get on deck, you know, so that idea of a leave might not be feasible for now. But let's chase the idea of people having to have access to sanitary pads. Yes. Very key. Just yesterday, I went to the um, um, uh, supermarket with my wife. The first question I asked while she was buying, you know, toiletries was, oh, my young girl at home, hope you have bought her sanitary pad. He said, oh, yes, nice. I'm taking care of yeah. all of those. Because I know these things. Yeah. And so I also expect that we should be concerned. But largely, Ekene said something which is very advisory. We hardly talk about these stories. Which is so why we were breaking because, the silence. Because yeah. 
we do not talk about them. So we pretend that they do not exist. exist. And for me, kudos to you for bringing yes. this up. And, you know, let's talk about it. Let's create the awareness. Let the men also know that it's not something you shy away from. That lady that you're living with, those your daughters at home, they go through the same thing. And so the earlier you begin to discuss it with them, that might even lead to other issues yeah. like sex education. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Let me just quickly say that I'll just bring attention to the, the, the countries that have menstrual leave uh, at the moment. Menstrual leave dates back to the Soviet Union. Right. We hope we don't forget In the 1920s mm -hmm. and Indonesia mm -hmm. in the 1940s. There are ongoing debates about it in the Philippines, Italy, France, Brazil, and Hong Kong. But Countries with menstrual leave in their labor codes uh, include Japan, Indonesia, South Korea, Taiwan, Vietnam, uh, Chinese, some Chinese provinces, and uh, wait for it, Zambia yeah, in Africa. Chuka so, and Bolaho, you better join us before the train <laughs> leaves you behind. Okay. I bring in another perspective to this uh, matter, and that is the religious uh, side of things. Okay. Um, I believe we need to also look at some more education um, in the space of certain religious belief. Yeah. As we continue to talk about it, maybe we'll have to demystify uh, the, the menstruation cycle uh, issue. There are religions that believe, oh, the, the woman is unholy, it's uh, this and it's that. It, 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 those are things that makes the subject even difficult to bring up, especially with those religious groups. And the there are some, schools, yeah, yeah. some ladies. Secondary, secondary schools, secondary even, schools. Even without telling anybody, you know that they need to go on leave for that period. Um, I've had colleagues who, when it is that period of the month, forget it. There is nothing. Nobody will teach you as a CEO before you ask them to go. We may need to bring in some sort of certification. If there could be a way in which um, uh, you could get a doctor's report that says this person has a painful period, uh, then those kind of people should automatically be excused uh, for those uh, couple of days. But for others who are just normal for those times, um, uh, it, it will put women at a disadvantage. But would you employ not, somebody? Yeah. Would you employ somebody? Uh, with a, well, uh, would you employ the, somebody with a certification if they came? And you ask them, you know, do you have anything you suffer from? And they say, yes, heavy cramps. So two days off every week. Every and some week. people even have endometriasis, mm. you know, which so, is even uh, worse. For me, I will, I, will, I will employ her, but that is me. Mm. But I also know a thousand and one other people who will not touch that person with a six. I think it's a battle that uh, women should take seriously um, and uh, break down the barriers. Because quite frankly, what we need in certain parts of the world is education. We need, and it's, it's not just about menstrual cycles, it's about everything. It's time we broke down barriers with what people continue to refer as Western education, which I now call global education. We need people to understand that there's nothing evil about menstruation, there's nothing evil about all sorts of things, and that anybody who thought so is deranged in 2020. Um, as for employment, yes, I'll employ immediately. It has absolutely no bearing. It, it doesn't bother me at all. Even if the person loses seven days in a month, I will still pay. Um, it just doesn't bother me at all. Why? Why? Explain your mindset to us. Because, because my mindset is basically that this is something natural to a living being, and there's nothing she can do about it. And I would have had it if I was a woman. So, I mean, just exactly. because I'm born a man. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Know, you. So <laughs> Excellent. You know? You need to come your campaign. I really do. I <laughs> yes, I know. I'm, I, I saw it and I'm joining it, yes. Excellent. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Join Are us. You yeah. us Join the revolution. Am, am, am I not part of the campaign? Yeah. No, you have to be an advocate. That you don't know. Uh, no, I, we don't announce our donations. Uh, no, it's a silent, yeah. it's a silent donor. <laughs> uh, yeah. We're expectant that a pebble thrown in the stream will have a ripple effect. After the break, Bolahon speaks out for an apparently destitute people of our society whose welfare is inextricably linked to ours.